Hey everyone, it's a really windy day on this episode of Breaking Bread, but we're still hanging out in Bay Ridge, Brooklyn around St. Anselm's Church. Now we've got some great restaurants for you, so stay tuned. On today's episode of Breaking Bread, we are going to be in Bay Ridge, Brooklyn, around St. Anselm's Church. Now, I know, I know, we've been to Bay Ridge before. We've already covered St. Patrick's and St. Andrew's. But there's so many parishes in this neighborhood and so many great restaurants. It's always hard to pick, so I enlisted the help of Monsignor Jamie, and he's going to meet us a little later on. But we've got a lot to explore, so let's get started. Okay guys, like I said, Bay Ridge has tons of good places to eat. But now we're gonna check out one of the new kids on the block. Zio Toto has only been here for a little while, but this place is getting rave reviews and I wanna know what all the excitement is about. Don't you? Let's go find out. Okay you guys, I'm not wasting any time on this episode of Breaking Bread. We got a lot to cover and I'm not messing around. So I came straight to the kitchen of Zio Toto and this is Giuseppe, the executive chef and one of the owners. And we're gonna make Vil Baldostano. Correct. Is that right, right? Okay, so Correct. show me what we're working Sada with. help me. You want me to chop yes. this? Yes, chop okay. this one. Rosemary. Rosemary, thyme. Thyme. And... So we start with this veal, right? That's the veal, mm -hmm. Baldostano. So I'll get my pan. And what's the first thing you put in there? Put olive oil. Uh -huh. Start it with a pacheta. And to make it a little bit crispy. Okay. And now we take it. Now we're gonna put those regular mushroom. mushrooms and the shiitake mushrooms. And the shiitake mushroom. Okay. Fresh garlic. Can't have Italian and cooking without fresh yeah. garlic. Pinot grigio. Nice. Always we gotta put parsley. Always gotta put parsley. Always. And this is almost ready. Perfect. For a couple minutes. All right. So we started with put a prosciutto. I put some prosciutto over here. Okay. Prosciutto di Parma, always. Di Parma? Yes, very good. Some cheese. Mmm. Very good. So what we do, we put it here in the middle. Ah. Like this. Looks great. Beautiful. Perfect. Then I'll get it there, you cut it. Right. A little bit in the middle. My beautifully, perfectly chopped herbs. And then break on. Now we go try to close it. That's why you kept the, the plastic there. It's yeah. easier to roll it's with it. It's easy to roll. All right. There's a there method to this. Put it in on one side, overlap it with the other. Side. Got it. Open. Perfect. Like this. Mm. What we do then, we take a flour. All right. Just regular white flour. Like right, this. A little bit. Right. Take another pan. Put olive oil, extra virgin. Mm -hmm. So we need the olive oil to be very, very hot because we're going to take the veal hot. and then exactly. fry both sides on that. Then we'll put two eggs. Oh, just beat them lightly. You don't want to yeah. do too much. Right. Eggs ready. Put over here. Eggs. Turn um. around nicely, easy. We do like this. Okay. So there's another little trick to that. He took yeah. the side that the two sides that were overlapped on each other, put that face down in the pan with the hot extra virgin olive oil. Okay, so our veal's been cooking for four minutes on each side and it's perfect golden it's brown. Perfect. So what we do now, Kathy, get some butter. Butter makes everything taste better. Butter, a shallow. Shallot. Put right. it back. 
And then I need a Marsala wine. A Marsala wine. It smells so good in here. It's so shallot, oh my goodness. And then we put a little brown sauce. A little secret Giuseppe's brown sauce my in there. My brown sauce, very, very good. <laughs> it's your secret, right? Yep. Oh, I wish you guys could smell this. This smells so good. Very, very good. So we know it's done because all the marsala wine has cooked down. It's golden brown on both sides. And next it's time to plate it. Nice. Always need the gravy to make it taste good. You can dip it in there. Perfect. This smells amazing. So here we have it. Viel Valdosano, right? Now Giuseppe, that was a lot of steps to make this. Yes. Yes. But I have nice a feel. Work. I was gonna say it. I knew it. I know it's worth it. It smells amazing. Then of course I'll go taste it and let you know if all that work was worth it. I think it is. Yes. Okay, so I was in the back with Giuseppe cooking, and I told you he was one of the co-owners. Now here's his brother Filippo, the other owner. Yes, right. So your brother put me put a lot of work into this veal. So I'm gonna taste it and see. Actually, this veal is one of our favorites. Okay. Uh, uh, people tend to love it. It's a little different. Mm -hmm. You know, we we stuff full of mushrooms and. Uh, uh, some of the herbs, very, very good. Mm -hmm. This is delicious. Very, very good. And the shallots take the taste to another level. So what else do we have here? Here we have uh, fried calamari, which is uh, pretty much what everybody loves. Everybody loves this. But one thing that we, we, we love is uh, crab uh, rollatini, mm -hmm. which is uh, eggplant rollatini stuffed with crab meat and shrimps. Okay. It's really, really good, delicious. You've got some special things on the menu, like the crab rollatini, calamari is good, this is delicious. Tell me about this famous dessert that I keep hearing about. Oh, well, people coming from all over just because they want to have the Nutella paradise. What it is is, is a, a, a focaccia bread, which we, we make from scratch, and it's very thin, and then what we do is we cut it, we slice it open, and we spread the Nutella all over inside, then right. it gets closed again, it gets back in the oven, baked again, it comes out, and then we'll put ice cream and some strawberries, and I guarantee you it's the most amazing, delicious thing you ever had. Well, you know what, you guys are doing pretty good already, because everything I've had is good so far. So let's get to this Nutella Paradise. I want to see what that's all about. All right, awesome, let's go. Great. Okay. Okay. <laughs> this is delicious. <laughs> This is really, really good. Yes. Mm. This is actually our number one dessert in here, Sella. People come in from all over just a bite and four, five, six, and then they'll just, just take this and leave, buy nothing else. Go. Yes. It's amazing. This is delicious. So, whenever you guys are in Bay Ridge, you gotta stop by Zio Toto and have something on this menu that you can't find anywhere else. Trust me, you'll find something. Okay guys, Zio Toto definitely didn't disappoint. But now we're gonna head over to another part of Bay Ridge to get a little different flavor of food. You guys ready? Let's go. I know when you're around St. Anselm's, you usually find yourself on Third Avenue grabbing a bite to eat. But today we're at Lesage, which is a little off the beaten track on 5th Avenue. So let's go inside and check out this little Lebanese oasis in the middle of Bay Ridge. Hey guys, so we're in Lesage, and I'm here with the owner, Marwan. And he's going to explain to me what this burst of color and beautiful smells and all of this is. What is this exactly? This is the uh, this is what we call the Lebanese garden, and this is a house specialty and includes um, a little of hummus. See that? Which we, yeah, exactly. This is the hummus. hummus. Uh -huh. This is the chickpeas with the tahini sauce and a lemon juice. Right. This is the the baba ganoush, uh, a little tahini. Mm -hmm. Sometimes little. you see it red. Sometimes it's like this, they white, put, tahini, right? Uh, they put right? the paprika. Okay. In it. Yeah, just a change color change or color. Uh, roasted uh, peppers. The green stuff that you see there are the uh, homemade, hand rolled grape leaves. Okay. And those are the falafels, the fried vegetable <laughs> burgers. Right. 
which every vegetarian knows about. Everyone knows what a falafel is. Everybody knows. The base is delicious. You make a sandwich out of it. You just dip it it's and eat becoming, with it. It's becoming international. Everybody loves this food. It's very, very healthy. Okay, so I'm going to try the grape leaves for you guys because odds are you're kind of familiar with this other stuff. I'm going to tell you how it is. That's delicious. Very this healthy. is what we call a Lebanese meza. Meza is a combination of hot and cold appetizers. A meza mm. in Lebanon is about 85 dishes. Whoa. Small, different Small little dishes. taste of everything. Exactly, of mm. everything. I was looking over here at the bread and I'm used to just seeing regular pita bread on a table. What's this? It's called the uh, saj bread. And uh, saj is the bread that we bake. Mm -hmm. And the saj also is the oven that we use to bake this bread. This is a mm. timeless Lebanese tradition that goes back many, many years. Uh, when grandma and mom used to make it back home in Lebanon. So this and is specifically we, Lebanese. Exactly. Okay. And we carried, I tried to carry on the tradition and just like keep it ongoing. We are the only restaurant that make this bread here in, I, I would say, New York. New York. Yes. I love so, it. It's a little chewy. It's not dense like pita bread. It's light and I feel like the semolina. On semolina, the yes. Mm. Semolina on the outside. This is all great, but what are you going to show me how to make today? We're going to show you how to make the uh, the mixed grill mm -hmm. and um, how we make it here at my place. It's um, it's a, the traditional way, mm -hmm. the way we make it in Lebanon, how we serve it. Okay, great. That sounds awesome. So I'm not going to get too full with this. This okay. is all delicious. So let's get into the kitchen and see what's going Good. on. Let's right. go. Okay, here we are. We are in the kitchen of Lesage, and this is executive chef Misha, and she's going to make us a delectable array of meats, right? That's correct. Okay, so she can get started, and you'll explain to me what we're doing uh, and what sure we're looking right. at, right? Yep. Mm -hmm. Okay, so Misha is ready to put the meat on the grill. Now the unique thing about this place is that they grill on actual charcoal, so we had to cut on the ventilation system to suck up all that smoke when we get our meat grilling. So why is it better to, to grill on top of charcoal? It gives it a different uh, taste and a better taste. The meat usually takes its time grilling on charcoal rather than gas. So it we gives get it more a very, tender. Exactly, more tender meat for you see for yourself. Yeah, I'll let you know. <laughs> How long do we leave it on there? It usually takes about 10 minutes. I think then she would be grilling the lamb chops. She's about to stop the lamb chops right now. And then grill the vegetables last? Just, you know, while she's doing the meat, she usually put the vegetables on the fire. Okay. On the gas grill. She usually has somebody helping her in the back. He gets all the vegetables ready, mm -hmm. grilled. Uh, gets all the pita bread ready for her. So she just took the bread and put the tomato sauce on it? She puts the uh, tomato paste on it. Paste, not, not tomato sauce. No, paste. it's a paste, okay. yes, yes. And then after that, she puts the onions, the one we see right there. Okay, I see. Uh, with the, uh, the sumac spices and the parsley. Okay. And she puts it on top and she throws it on the grill. Alrighty. Now gets, that's not the saj bread, that's just regular pita bread. This is not bread. the saj bread, this is just regular pita bread, yes. Okay. And then they, uh, they, the bread will get nice and crispy. I love crispy bread. The meat is halfway, I would, would say halfway. that the meat is halfway done probably. Mm -hmm. we, we try to uh, keep the shish kebab a little less time on the fire. Mm -hmm. It'll stay nice and tender, nice and, and soft. And just a little medium, medium well, and just not all the way cooked. Then you're going to put all different kind of sauces with it, just, you know, gives it a different, different taste. Okay, so we're getting our last pieces of peppers off of the grill. Exactly. So she's going to cut the heat of bread right now. Awesome. And then we lay it on top. Uh -huh. Voila. Look at that. Whoa, Misha, this looks so good. Wow. Look at all these colors. Everything is so beautiful. Thank really you. Nice. Very, very nice. Now we're going to go break bread Lebanese style. This looks 
amazing. It is such a beautiful presentation and it makes you want to dig right in, but what's the right way to eat this? The, the right way to do it is to uh, grab a piece of that pita bread. Okay. Okay, we'll just go ahead and do it. And you could do it with your hands. And then grab a piece of chicken. What you do is that you put a small piece of chicken in there, okay. like that, and we'll grab a, a couple of french fries. Okay. There we go. I take instruction well. Okay. <laughs> in there, just like that. All right. Grab some garlic paste now. Okay. Ah, this we're making a little mini sandwich. So just roll it up. Just roll it up and then eat the whole thing. I see, I see. And there we go. Unusually, before we do it, if you want to do it just a Lebanese way, mm -hmm. you just like grab a a glass of that arak, and right, you true. say, "Cheers." Cheers. You take a sip, mm. and then you'll have a bite. Okay. This is an explosion of flavor. Literally, the chicken is very well mm -hmm. seasoned. Mm -hmm. It usually, packs a punch. Well, you, you, a chicken usually sits in that marinade for uh, four to five days before we start serving it. Well, that's why. You that's have why. To. It's a must. This is absolutely delicious. When you are in Bay Ridge, the massage is very necessary. You got to make sure to come back in. And this is enough for like how many people? This is enough for six, seven people. There you have it. You got to come and check it out. Let's keep eating. <laughs>
and a balsamic reduction. And that is a really, really good, intense taste. Mm. Don't think bitter. It's like not bitter anymore. No. Mm -hmm. it's, the sweetness starts to come in with it. So this is kind of like a garnish, but it adds a delicious flavor to it. That it makes a nice appearance. Color. Yeah, yeah. It looks good. So we've got some roasting, some grilling going yeah. on. Yeah. Very, very good. And so it's your turn to cook, Monsignor, but do you mind if I tag along? Uh, of course. <laughs> I know how much you love pizza. You know I do. <laughs> so we're going to go hook up with Marnie right. then. All right. Well, it's my turn to do the cooking today, and as you can see, Tati's tagged along to crash the party, right? Yes, I did. <laughs> hey, you guys know I love pizza, so I decided to come on in the kitchen and see if I can get some tips of my own. And today we're making a famous grilled pizza. I can't wait. I've never had grilled pizza before, so I gotta see this. And here today we're here with uh, the chef, uh, Marnie, and she's gonna how prepare a nice pizza. How are you doing today? I'm good, thanks. Good. So, uh, how yep. do we get started? Well, we're gonna do pizza cooked completely on the grill. No oven, no nothing. And we start with a piece of dough and stretch it out kind of by hand on the back of a sheet pan. So it's nice and thin. And that makes it nice and, and crispy. That, yeah, it makes it crispy. You want a little chewy in the, in the inside, but still crispy on the outside. Pizza. So now we just put this right on the grill, just wow. like that. Really what we're doing now is searing it until it's not sticky anymore. Until it falls down a little bit just to get it started. Then you don't need your pan anymore. And now you'll start to see the bubbles kind of coming up. It's searing on the bottom. You just watch it. You give it a couple of minutes on this side. Then we'll start to kind of rotate it around so that it cooks evenly. So it's not going to burn. And then we just start. It's kind of use your imagination and whatever you any topping you, you want. Whatever, whatever you, you like. like. I've got a little extra virgin olive oil. I've got a little, uh, we've a little oregano What's shredded it? mozzarella cheese, just wow. and it's not real heavy cheesy. This pizza, all of Tati's favorites. <laughs> Light, oh, this is very dietetic. This pizza. Now we've got some fresh chopped tomato with basil, extra virgin olive oil, oh, and we're going to spread those around. Fresh regatta cheese that we mix okay. again with a little bit of basil. Just dab it on there. And like just, I find the spoon and fling method <laughs> works <laughs> really <laughs> pretty Wherever well. It lands, Wherever it lands. Lands. <laughs> it's like, uh, you know. Spoon and fling. I you like gotta, that. Yeah, don't hold back. You gotta really just own it. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you never get into a mean fight with no, the dishwasher, no, no, no. do you? Okay, <laughs> now we've got fresh sliced prosciutto. We're gonna throw a little bit of that on. Uh, All right. Marty, I'm definitely going to steal your spoon and fling technique. <laughs> like spoon and that. fling. Oh, little little bit of grated Parmesan cheese, a little extra flavor, little fresh basil, and then we've got a little bit of baby arugula here, and I'm just going to dress that with a little olive oil, a little bit of salt. Well, I would have never thought to put arugula Toss. on top of a pizza. Well, this is, you know. How'd you just, come up with that idea? I think it was in the summertime, and I know I had a friend of mine brought me a whole bunch of baby arugula from that he grew in his garden. Now we're going back over onto the hot side. Okay. Okay. And we're just going to do again. We're going to rotate and let it let it cook on the bottom now. So the thing I love about this, though, is that arugula makes me feel like, well, it's got salad on it. It's healthy. Like anymore, exactly. <laughs> you can see what went on yeah. it. I mean, yeah, I had fresh. a small handful of the mozzarella. Yeah. I mean, right. it's really nice and light and, 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 and lots of flavor. Eating, That's right? the important thing, you yeah. know, is you get lots of flavor. I think I can eat that whole thing. Oh, I have no <laughs> doubt. I have no doubt. I will certainly give it my best <laughs> shot. Best shot. <laughs> All right. Father Jamie, I think we are good to go here. Cut. Wow, into little square slices. Yeah, whatever, whatever size you want. Wow, wow, look at that. There you go. All righty. And we've got Michelle's pizza. Affectionately <laughs> named after one of your customers, right? Right, exactly. Yeah. That exactly. looks great. It looks you awesome. did a great job. Now it's only we have time to eat it. That's for you. <laughs> Thank you. you. You're welcome. Let's go, Tati. You're welcome. Let's go. <laughs> Whoa, look at this sea of pizza right here. It looks delicious. It does. So I got the margarita and you got the... Michelle. Michelle. What are we waiting for? Let's <laughs> dig in. I couldn't wait to try this. I know this is your favorite. Mm -hmm. How's it taste? I'm not going to give it away just yet. That is good. There is so much flavor in this. It looks simple with just the sauce and the cheese. 
in the bread, but it's like a little explosion in your mouth. And the crust, so crispy. Crispy, but like nice and tender on this side too. I'm definitely gonna try this at home. You're gonna try to grill it at home? Yes. Why not? On my barbecue. Me? I'm just gonna come back here. <laughs> you should come and check it out too. We'll be right back after these messages. In the meantime, go to our website, netny.net slash breaking bread. Okay, Monsignor Jamie, now you're the one always showing me around Bay Ridge, but I've been doing my homework and I found a place. I hope it's a good one. It is, you ready for some dessert? I'm ready. Come on. So what do you think of my discovery? Cafe Rustica. So far, it's great. So far, beautiful. This is Angela, <laughs> the manager here. Nice to and meet nice you, Angela. You. So tell us, how would you describe Cafe Rustica? It's something different on Third Avenue. We're trying to bring something different to Bay Ridge. Well, I have to say, this place is really comfortable. It's delightful. It's open, and there's a lot of light in here. But now, we've got these desserts laid out. Is this cheesecake? Cheesecake. In the bottom and, and, and red velvet. Red velvet. Pretty good. So I'm gonna go learn how to make a fruit tart from Monsignor mm -hmm. Jamie. You guys know I love tarts. I always say apple's my favorite, pear is my favorite, but now I've narrowed it down. Just tarts are my favorite. So who's gonna teach me jazz? Desmond. Okay, so I'm gonna go and I'll leave you. I'll uh, be safe right here. Okay, it's definitely your turn. I've been eating a lot without <laughs> you. <laughs> so let's go learn. Go. Okay, you guys, I'm here with Jasmine, the pastry chef here at Cafe Rustica, and we're gonna make my favorite dessert. Fresh fruit tarts, tarts, that's right. So you make the custard also? That's right, uh, it's freshly made every single day. So is the tart shell. Yes. She's gonna put me work too, I'm gonna decorate the fruit tarts. Nice. So now I can decorate it with whatever I want? Now you can decorate it any way you like it. Now, you know, I feel like the most important part of a fruit tart is the crust. Because if the crust isn't good, it doesn't matter how good the custard is, it just loses something. What do you think? That's true, but um, another very important thing is the fruit. Ah, uh, like Your yes. fruit has to be nice, ripe, just yes. right. Yes, that is the worst. When you get a fruit tart and the fruit is not ripe. That looks nice. Wow, nice. that looks really nice. Have fresh fruit tart. Fresh homemade fruit tarts. I can't wait to go taste this. <laughs> so wait a minute, what happened to all that dessert I left you with? What dessert? Oh, I knew it. There's only it. one. <laughs> There's too much temptation in this place. Well, here's your fruit tart I made for you. You made? Well, you know, I kind of, sometimes I say I made things for you. I didn't exactly make it, but I helped out. But this one, I was hands-on. I actually put that together for you. You're learning my tricks. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but these look absolutely fabulous. Yes. And they make all this stuff fresh and homemade wow. here. And the presentation is great. Beautiful, beautiful. I love these sugar decorations. This is so good here. It's crunchy and the fruit is fresh. Yeah. I'm telling you, this place has got their crust game together. The crust of the cheesecake is good. This is good. Mm. Well, Tati, I can't believe that you're showing me around Bay Ridge now. I know. Can you believe it? There's so many great places to visit here in Bay Ridge, Cafe Rustica, and all the places that we visited today. You can learn more at our website, netny.net slash breaking bread. That's all for this show. I'm Tati. And I'm Monsignor Jamie. See you next time on Breaking, breaking Bread. bread.